Hi everyone, Jimmy here. Um, today I'll be walking through recreating this web page right here. Okay, um, creating the HTML and styling it from scratch. So join me. I hope that you are able to learn a thing or two, you know, as we go along. So um, here is my text editor. I'll be working with this folder here, trivia page. I already have my HTML page created and my style.css page. So let's get into it. All right, in my index, the HTML page, I'll start with doc type HTML. That's like the first um, thing that you need to have for any HTML page that you create. It helps your browser understand that you're trying to render HTML content, okay? And then it's able to do a good job of rendering that page. The next is my HTML tag. This is the tag that contains every part of the code that you're going to write. Inside that HTML tag, I would have a head tag. This head tag contains information that even though it's not displayed in your web page, in your browser, is um, key to how your page will render and what it renders. Within this, I would have a meta tag uh, we'll get more into meta tags much later. Um, I'm adding this attribute with value UTF-8. We'll get more into that later, so let's just continue. Title is the next tag I'm adding. This would um, give your page a title, right? Attribute page. And then last thing in this um, head tag is to add a link tag so I can um, bring in my CSS. Okay, so I'm adding two attributes. So this and href. The href is used for um, locating you know, the page of my CSS. Because they are in the same file, I just need to name it and the browser would find it where it is. All right, after the head tag, the next is body. Body contains all of the visible um, elements that you would see in your page. Anything that goes into the body tag is going to show up on your page. Now, if you look at this page, there is no header. Um, you see some landing pages have like um, this little thing running across the width of the page. You have your logo on one end, and then you have like um, little links that navigate through different parts of the website on that. That's usually called a header, but this page doesn't have that. So I'll just go right into a main tag for the main content. Now, inside of that main tag, I have this H1, um, this huge text here. I think H1 should work for this. It's like the most um, prominent text on that page. So let's use H1 for that. All right, and then after that, we have this text here, the man who saved a billion lives. I'm going to use a P tab for that. All right, and after that, I have this image here. And if you notice, the image has a bit of um, a caption here, okay? Now to capture that really well, I won't just use, I won't use um, just the image tag. I would use something called the figure tag. 
and then inside that figure tag, I would have my image, of course, source, attributes, and my alternate text attributes also. And then I can close that. And within the figure tag, just below the image, I can add fig caption, okay? And inside of that, I can have this text. Let's just copy this so I don't have to type all that long. Okay, so we have that. Now, if you look at this page, you can see that this um, text here from here, all the way down practically looks like its own um, section as apart from set apart from this image and header heading bit. Okay, so I'm going to use a section tag right after this figure tag. Okay, and inside that section tag, I'll have this header. For this header, let me use um, H2, right? And it says, here is a timeline. There is a timeline of Dr. That's life. Okay, and I have that. Now below that, I have this, um, list here. In HTML, we have two types of lists. We have ordered lists and we have unordered lists. You use an ordered list um, when you want to accurately number your list. Maybe you want to use numbers. You have one, item one, item two, item three, or you want to use numerals or you want to use um, alphabets, A, B, C, things like that. You use an ordered list for that. But in a case like this way, all you have is like um, bullet points, okay? There's no numbering on this. In this case, you use an unordered list. Now, let me just show you, this is what an ordered list tag looks like, right? And an unordered list tag, looks like this okay this is for ordered list and this is for unordered list now irrespective of which of the lists you are using the next thing that goes inside is what you call a list item okay a list item this list item is what um each of these single things you know is called so all of it together is an unordered list, but each of this is a list item. So I can take this out, right? And then I have my unordered list here. And then inside of it, I would put all of this list items. Now I already typed it out before I started recording, so I don't have to, you know, spend that much time doing that while recording. So I'll just copy that from here and then bring it in here. Now, if you notice around um, on this page, the dates here are bolder, right? Than the rest of the text. Okay, now to give you that bold styling, um, I, add, I wrapped, you know, the dates in, this tag called the strong tag okay so the strong tag is used to place um emphasis all right it's used to place emphasis on an object on um a tag okay so it does that all right so we can go on Now, after that, you have this um, little quote here by this Indian prime minister. In HTML, right, we 
have two types of quotes, okay? We have um, the inline quote and we have like a block quote. Now the inline quote is what you would use if you were having like a quote in the middle of a text. So as you mean, you have this whole text and then just a part of it is the quote, right? You would use the inline quote. So it doesn't stand by itself. Inline means that it flows with the rest of whatever line it is in, okay? But what we have here is not inline. It's a standalone um, element or item here. So for this, we would use block quotes. And then this little bit here um, would use an HTML tag called site, C-I-T-E, to indicate um, who, you know, made this code, who we are citing, okay? Now I have that um, somewhere here. Hmm. Okay, so just after this, save that. Okay, now um, in order to see, okay, before I see what I have um, typed so far, let me just add this last bit right here. Uh, it looks similar in size to this one. So I'll just use H2 again. So close to end that section off. And then I type in, if you um, look at this part of this text, it's a different color, it's underlined, and it's clickable, okay? Right here, if you look at the bottom here, when I hover on this, right at that bottom is the link that um, this would take us to if we were to click on it. Okay, so to create this, to create a clickable text that takes us um, somewhere, we use a tag called anchor tag, anchor tag, um, let's just copy this link address because we're going to need it inside of the anchor tag. Okay, so come here. And this is our anchor tag is simply an A. And inside of that, we had we add the href attribute. Okay, href attribute is used to um, hold the link, you know, where where the link would take us to when we click on it. And we already copied this link address. So we drop this here. Uh, and then I can cut this out and bring it right in the middle here and save. Okay, and just like that, I have all of the HTML, you know, that is on this site. Pretty neat, huh? All right, to serve this site, um, I'm going to use something called an extension in my VS Code. You come here, the extension is called Live Server. So what Live Server does for you is when you're working with um, HTML, pure HTML CSS code, it creates what you call a server for you to help you serve that page. So I don't need to, manually load up the page live server would help me you know set it up and then as i make changes to the page as i keep working i don't need to manually refresh you know my browser in order to see the latest changes i've made live server takes the changes and you know serves it as long as immediately i save the new stuff i've done live server just you know serves all of the content on the browser again. So I can just view it without having to do a refresh. So to access that, I click on here, go live, and it takes me here. This is the web page that I just created. And um, it doesn't look anything like this, but I promise by the time we're done, yeah, it's going to look like this, okay? So let's start. Uh, first things first, if we look at this page, we notice that 
everything here is centered, okay? It's not on one end like we have here. So to do that, let's go to this main here. Let's give this a class. Uh, what can we call this class? Let's say trivial page. Okay, and then we come here and we pick up that class and we style it. So first thing first, uh, if I add this, notice every, everything is now centered, right? Good stuff. All right. Now, next thing is to notice that this background here, we can see is not white. There seems to be, you know, like, um, a bit of white around the edges, but this main bit here is not white. So we can come here and then just add um, background color. Okay, I believe this is the color of this. This is something called an RGB value. Okay, instead of just naming a color, uh, we have RGB value. Taking a look at that much later. Ah, and we come here and we see that. Cool stuff. Now notice that right here, there's a bit of space, okay, between the top here and this doctor here. Or like this one, it's like edge to edge. And then at the bottom here too, there's also a little bit of space. Okay, so let's add um, a padding property to this tribute page. Now, um, CSS works with something we call box model. Okay, and what that simply means is that every element in your HTML page is um, seen as a box. Okay, um, it's basically seen as a box. Right, and a box has four sides. It has top, bottom, left, and right. Right? Okay. Now we we are able to add um, padding and margin and even border um, to our elements. Okay, using that box model. Now, if I want to add padding to this. Um, tribute page class from the background color, we know that that's all of this, right? I can add padding to the top, to the right, to the bottom, and to the left, okay? I can add padding to the top, right, bottom, and left. When I'm um, adding the value, it goes in that, direction, clockwise direction, starting from the top. So if I have this value, um, this part in here, and I say add 100 pixels, 30 pixels, 50 pixels, and 10 pixels. This first value here goes to the top. This goes to the right. This here, goes to the bottom, and this here goes to the left in that order, in a clockwise direction starting from the top. So if I save this and I come here, you see that it has added that, right? Exactly. Okay, but this um, is way more than what I need to have here. So I'm going to reduce that, okay? Uh, and then I think I'm going to add equal padding on both sides of this. So let's just say um, at the top, let's add 70 pixels. To this side, let's add 30, let's add 50, and then 30 here. Okay. All right, uh, now 
we haven't added um the next thing is this image right and let's pick um copy image image address so we can get the exact image that we have here uh this still looks a little too big so let's, let's take it down a notch right let's do 60 up here Okay, uh, back to our index.html for source here, we add um, the link that I just copied, the link to that image. And alt here, let's just say Dr. Norman, this is her name, and other scientists. Okay, now I can add a um, class here so that I can easily style this, let's say image section. I can also add a class to this image. Let's say class of image, keep this simple. And here, say image option, okay? Now I can style using those three classes. Uh, before we get into that, let's style this piece of text. Let's add a class heading here and another class heading text. Okay, so for this heading, you notice the heading here looks quite smaller than this. So let's have that. Um, font size, let's do 60 pixels. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's, that's close enough. And then adding text. Font size, let's say 30 pixels. Hmm. That looks way bigger than this. So let's reduce it to like a 24. Okay, that looks better. But now the space between this looks just slightly bigger than what we have. So I can just come here and add margin button. This guy, let's say 30 pixels. Let's see. Okay, that looks fine. Now, um, this font, it doesn't look quite like what we have here. So let's try to fix that. Um, so the body, let's add fonts. Family. That's just to select the um, typeface or the type of font you want to display. Now, if you look at this, we have three values available for the font family property. And I can imagine you in your head asking, you know, are we using how is that going to work? But uh, we don't do it at the same time, or rather, we would not be using it the three of them at the same time. What's happening here is that your browser picks this first value and attempts to render it. If it's able to render that font um, type, then it goes ahead. But if, for example, for instance, it's not able to, what it does is it goes to the next value that you have and tries to use that font. If it's not able to, it moves to the third value that you have provided. So simply these two values are like um, fallback values, okay? So it tries the first one. If it doesn't get it, it moves to the next. If it gets it, it just sticks with that font family and all is right with the world. Okay, so if we look at this and this, that looks just a bit closer. Don't you agree? All right. Um, 
This seems to be done. Okay, so let's proceed. The image. Now, if you notice, this does not look as full as this. That's one. Then this has um, a bit of a white background. We don't have that white background here just yet. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to style the figure text that we wrapped around that image. All right. Uh, the figure tag rather that we wrapped around that image. So if we come here, we added a class of image sec section to it. So let's pick that um, dot image section. And first off, give it a background color of white. Okay, look at that. Awesome. Now we can also add um, a width of 100% to it. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let's take out this and then come here to where we had initially added this padding on the left and the right. And let's try to reduce that. Okay. Is that reduced already? Okay, so we have this. Uh, let's see if we can take it even you know, further down. And see what it gives us. Okay. All right. Uh, aha, so that's that culprit. Okay, so we add margin zero to this. And then we can go back and increase this value. Let's see what happens with 30 pixels. Okay, that's fine. That looks close enough, I think. <laughs> okay, but this width doesn't you know cover um all of it like or most of it like we have here. That's not that's not good. So let's select the image. We added a class of image to it. And let's give it a width of 100%. Let's see what happens with that. OK. But we don't want it to entirely cover this guy, right? No, we don't. We don't want that. So let's reduce the width a little. Let's do a 98%. Let's see. Awesome. I think that's fine. Yes, we need just, just a little bit of space on that edge. All right. Now look at this um, caption here. And you will notice that it's not quite um, the same with this guy. This, this is smaller. So let's, let's increase that. But, image caption and we give it a font size of let's say 30 pixels let's see how huge it gets okay that's way too much we don't need it to be that huge we try 20 pixels but it's a little small okay so let's try 22 pixels Hopefully that's adequate for what we need. All right, that looks fine. Uh, if you come here, you will notice there's a bit of space between these two lines of the caption. But on our page, it's much closer than that, okay? You can fix that by adding a line height. Line height simply, um, says how much, how tall should each line of an element be? That's pretty much what line height is. 
and we can add our line value in pixels or in percentages. So if I add 30 pixels here, same thing with this, it doesn't quite match what we want. Okay. What if I try percentages? Now, um, line height percentages work relative to the font size of the element that you're adding it to. So if I say, for example, um, line height should be 100%, 100% relative to the font size is the exact font size of that element. And since we notice that we need this space, we know that um, what we're looking for is not 100%, okay? We need more than that to achieve that space that we want. So let's try 150%. Okay, that looks better, right? Uh, maybe we should add some more. Let's try 170. Okay, I think that looks better way better. But then you notice that between the image and the text and also between the text and this bottom, there is um, a bit of space too, okay? So let's try to add that um, by adding padding. Now, when we were talking about um, shorthand here, we used four values to represent the top, the right hand, the bottom, and the left hand. We can also use a shorthand that um, uses just two values, okay? If we write this shorthand, what we are saying is that each um, of the values picks a side and the opposite side to it, okay? Now, like I said, we always start with the top and the opposite side to the top is the bottom. So that means that this first value here would be applied to the top and the bottom. And the second value here goes for the left and the right, okay? Okay, well, that's quite uh, much compared to what we have here. So let's try to half that. Let's you know, turn that into half and see if we're getting anywhere. Okay, that seems fine, right? Okay, so let's move to the next one. And that's this heading here. Here's a timeline of social so and so's life. So and so's life. Now, if you come here, you notice that above and below this heading, there is um, some space. Okay, so we can add that. Uh, Let's come here, let's add um, a class to this fellow. Let's say timeline heading, okay? And then let's try to let's try it. All right, to achieve the space at the top and the bottom, we can simply add adding set it to let's say 50 pixels and on left and right we set it to zero right okay and we have this uh, i personally think that's fine right okay and then uh this our beloved on ordered list here now, if you notice, even though what we have here is centered, you know, is um, compressed towards the center of the page, this here, the list items here tend to be more, um, what's the word? Pushed towards the left side of the page. They are aligned towards the left hand side of the page, right? And then they don't take up um, full space. Even though, for example, look at this line item, even though um, the text continues on this next line, it is cut off somewhere here, okay? So that it doesn't take the full width of the page. And we can achieve that by 
Let's try to um, limit the weight of that. Okay. Now let's add a class to this. Right, class timeline. And then for the list item, let's add timeline list item, right? And then we can copy this class and add it to all of the list items. Okay, now let's save this and head over here. Hmm. Okay. You will, uh, we have the class timeline, right? And let's set a width. In fact, let's set a maximum width. Um, that says that the width of that element should not exceed whatever value we set as maximum width. Okay, so here let's try um, 700 pixels. Hmm. Something is not quite picking. Uh, what could it be? Okay, we didn't finish adding this here anyways. So let's just finish up on that. So we can carry on. All right. Now back to styling this guy. Oh, I mixed, I missed a key here. I was wondering about that. All right. Now, uh, notice that after limiting the width, you just put everything this way and then left space here. But we want it to be um, aligned at the center just like we have here. So what we're going to do is, uh, we could do, we could add text align center. Hmm. Okay, that's not what we need. Okay, so let's set a margin value and add, uh, let's see. Okay, there should be a margin value at the bottom here and at the top here. So let's say 50 itself, the top and bottom. And then for back, um, left and right, auto. Now what auto does is it will take this um, space here, split it into equal um, halves, and then put each of those halves on both sides of this content, okay? It takes the remaining space here, splits it in half, and then adds it on both sides, okay? To give you um, that centeredness that we're looking for. So let's say this style, and voila, that's it. Okay, that's it. Uh, are we? Okay. Now we can style this um, line items. If you notice, the line items here are centered, but here they all point, um, they are all aligned to the left. So let's fix that. Okay, so this is timeline list item. Yeah. 
in the first styling, we add to it text align left. And there you have it, everything aligned to the left. Now let's increase the font size to match this. Okay. Let's say, um, So let's take the font size. Um, okay, let's add values here. Okay. Maybe we should just take it down just a notch. Okay. Um, if you look at each of these line items, you can see that there's a bit of space between each of them. And here, where you have um, one line item spanning many lines, you have that hint of space there too. So we're going to use the line height um, method. And then we're also going to add space, um, yeah, between two different line items or list items rather. Okay. So first thing first. Um, yeah, line height. We can just use 150% and save. Okay, let's just do 170, please. All right, and then let's add um, margin to each. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at this again. Look at this. Let's compare. Okay, we could just leave that and then move on to the next, which is this um, block codes. Now, first thing we need to understand um, is that this block code itself is a block element. While this is an inline elements, okay? If we look here, we find out that both of them are aligned to the left, right? And then, of course, the space that we have from line height is here, and then there's a bit of space here. So, it's that. Uh, first off, we also know that um, this block code here and this site tag, they have some similarities like their color and font um, size. So we can just add a class to both of them. 
that we can use to um, add the same properties to them. Okay. All right, so first off, let's add the font size to the class quotes. Okay, the font size still needs to be bigger. And of course, line height. Okay, that seems a little bit more like it. Um, let's also add this font style Italy to this issue, okay? Now, if you come here, you realize that block code here is also restricted, you know, widthwise, just like this um, on other list. So we would add that to the block code, we would add that, um, Restriction to so let's do maximum width uh, 700 pixel. Okay, now that we've done that, uh, let's add margin zero auto issues, um, align. Course. Now, but this itself still needs to be aligned to the left. Okay, so you can come um, inside here and type that. Okay, I'll give it a value of left. Well, all right, okay. Uh, we might have to reduce the font size and the line height a little bit. Let's see this. That's one size is small. What did I do? No. Oh. All right. All right. Now we can uh, also add the space that we have here. Uh, we also need that to be here. So how do we do that? Um, let's just, how about we just pick the block code tag and we add the value at the top, at the bottom, and for the right and the left side, zero. Okay. All right. Hmm. Okay, so it's a time to fix this here. Um, let's come to the on order list section, right? That's here. And then 
You can use a third shorthand. Uh, here. Now we've explained what happens when we use four value shorthand here. And what happens when we use just two values? So let's explain um, what happens when you know what you have is three values. What happens here is that the top picks the first value, second value is assigned to the left and to the right, and the last value is assigned to the bottom. Okay. So again, once we have these three. Um, value shorthand. The first uh, um, the first value is applied to the top. The second value is applied left and right, and the third value is up here, uh, applied at the bottom. So let's say that. Let's see what we have here. Hmm. All right, so let's have this. It still looks a little big. Uh, so I, I guess here is where we want to change that. Let's try 40 pieces here. Mm. How about 30? What happens when we add 30? Or when we add zero for that matter. Okay, it looks more like it. Hmm. Okay. The bottom here seems to be smaller than here and smaller than what is here. So let's just uh, let's still try to get it to get things you know looking as exact as possible. Right. Okay. Now uh added styles across almost everything. All right, um, I think the only other thing I want to um, add here uh, before you know I say we're done in that sense. Oh, two things actually is the um, color. Now the color here is practically jet black, but if you look here, it's a bit of a gray tinge to it. So let's come here to the body and then say color. Okay. Uh, Yeah, so this this does not quite look as black as before, right? Uh, just to confirm, let's take that out and see what becomes of the page. Okay, so let's put it back in. Yeah, I think uh, I think this works. Okay, one other thing is if you look at the top corner here, you see that this is rounded, like what we have here, that is just um, rather sharp. So let's come here and add border radius and the value of, let's say, 10. Yes. Awesome. Now, the only thing is this gap here seems more. 
than what we have right now. So let's attempt to see if we can do that. All right. I think at this point, yeah, we're pretty done. All right, so then this is where we uh, hang up the boots on this page. I hope you've been able to follow along. I hope you've been able to learn one or two things. Um, I hope this was as instructive as it was um, informative and whatnot. So at this point, yeah, I'm just going to put an end to this session, right? See you all in the next session. Bye.